everybody. Hi, Clara and all. Hi. Hi, Lena. Hi. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hi, David. Hi. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Grace. You ready, Pipes? Uh -oh. Hi, Jason. <sighs> hey, David. Hello, Lena. How are you? Hi. Good. Welcome back. When did you guys get Thank back? You. We've missed you. We got back. What day did we get back? Thursday. Thursday. Hi, Lucy. Tuesday. Hi, Kate. Tuesday. Hi. We got back yesterday. Hello. And this is Miel. Michelle? Miel. Oh, Miel. Hi, Miel. Are you, do you go to Francophone? Yes. Nice to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Oh, hey. Hi. Is that, tell me your name again. Annie's sister. Diana. Hi. Diana. Hi, Diana. Hi, Diana. Diana's kids, Natasha and Timmy are here. Oh. Hi. You guys have formed a bubble. <laughs> nice to see you. Hey, Corbin. Hey, Cam. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Camille. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi Ella. That lemon just needs to be rinsed. Hi, Xiao Mei Mei. Hey, Alice. Hey. Hi, hi Xiao Mei Mei. Sorry, I missed you this morning. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Hi, Brenna. So great to have you back. Hi, Bill. Hi, Lena. Hi. Hi, McKenna. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hi, folks. Hi, Tegan. Hey, Mayati. Hi, Jane. Hi. I'm Hi. trying to mute myself. I can't find me. Sorry. Oh, you don't need to mute yourself yet. Hey, Griffin, if I didn't say hi yet. Hi, Griffin. Um, so I think we can maybe get this meal done in an hour today, guys. What do you think? <laughs> Let's try that. So if you haven't already, turn on your oven to 425. Mine's been preheating for about 10 minutes. Hey, Zachary. Hey, Leigh. Hi. And the next thing I want us all to do is have a, a pot of water on the stove ready for your eggs. So you don't need a huge pot, but just a medium-sized pot, um, like this size. I just have one that's like this size. And I don't have it full all the way but just enough so that maybe halfway, because then I'm going to put in some eggs. Um, I'm going to put in about six eggs. Mayadi, do you have a question? Um, preheat the oven to 425, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Hey, yeah. um, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Should we, uh, whatchamacallit, should we, is it, are we going to boil the eggs? We are going to boil the eggs. So should we start boiling? We, um, just just start the water boiling. We're gonna boil our eggs at the same time. Nina, so we have, have like I have a specific set of steps. Hey, hey Zoe. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> You're my OG. The last two weeks have been your sister. Nina. Hey Emily, hey Talia. So how much water? About halfway full of water. It doesn't have to be all the way. Just halfway is enough. You don't need a ton of water to boil eggs. And yeah. go ahead and put your um, your water your pot of water on to boil. Yes. Um, Lena. Yeah. Is this an okay sized pot? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Only fill it halfway, Shamime. Okay. Okay. So everyone, go ahead. Make sure your ovens are on to four twenty five. Make sure your pot of water is on. Uh, 425. Uh, what heat? You just want to put it up to like maybe high because we're gonna, we want our eggs to start, we want the water to be boiling when we put our eggs in. There's many different techniques of boiling eggs. This happens to be the one that I use. So I wait till my water is boiling before I put in my eggs. Are we gonna hard boil or soft boil eggs? We are going to soft to medium boil. It is up to you. 
Um, I like my eggs for this salad in particular, for this Cobb salad. I like to, I like it to be about like medium boil, soft, so, uh, medium, medium, <laughs> not hard. Unless you really like it hard, you can. But I, okay. like it, I like the center, the yolk to be a little bit still slightly, slightly runny. Just like soft. Thanks. Sure. If you would like to boil your eggs longer, you certainly can. All right. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, everybody, because it looks like everyone who's here is here. It's 504. Um, oh, I see one more person entering. We're going to start seasoning our chicken first. So you remember when we season chicken. Hey, Isabella. Hey, Tim. You're just in time. Make sure your oven is at 425 and make sure your pot of water is filled halfway and is on the stove um, starting to boil. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to season our chicken. You definitely could have seasoned this earlier, but I figured we would review again um, how to season chicken. And especially with this chicken, I like to season it on the bone. So we've done this, a couple of you, a few of you have done this with me before, but I figured it, it never hurts to do it again. So I have my sheet tray with my parchment paper or foil on, on my counter right now. And the first thing we're going to do is, um, is, is season our chicken. So you're gonna get your hands dirty. We're gonna have to wash our hands in between, but take your chicken out and lay it on the, your sheet tray. I got a lot of chicken, but, uh, but you may not have gotten as much chicken as me. I like to boil, a, I like to, to roast a lot of chicken at once. So I have a lot of extra chicken during the week to throw on to other things. Like my kids really like chicken salad. So I, I bought some extra chicken breast this week to, to um, make some chicken salad. I may have gotten too much chicken, but that's okay. Hey, Lena, oh. what are we supposed to put on the tray? Just the chicken right now. Put, you see how I have my chicken breasts? Mine are really big. Um, you yeah, have, but like, have, what are we putting, like, like parchment paper or foil? Or? Yes, either one, whichever one you have. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting my, um, my chicken breast on the tray. I have a lot. Yikers. <laughs> so... You don't need to have as much as I do. Um, I went a little overboard, but I'm gonna wash my hands now. Now that I've handled this chicken, we're gonna be continually washing our hands in between touching all of our uh, chicken and the other utensils. So I'm washing my hands now that I've laid them onto the cutting board. And then I'm gonna go get my salt and pepper and have that nearby. And when I season chicken, I try to keep one hand clean. I use my, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my right hand to season with salt. So I'm only gonna get one hand dirty, which is my left hand. If you have a helper in the kitchen, maybe one person can be the chickeny hand person and the other person can be the seasoner, but I'm just gonna do my, I'm gonna keep my right hand as my seasoning hand and my left hand as my, chicken lifting kind of mani manipulating hand. So only one hand gets dirty, all right? So here I go. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to use my left hand and uh, there, I'm gonna use my left hand and I'm going to, I know this is your favorite part, Tegan. <laughs> I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna separate the skin, not all the way, I still want the skin attached, but I'm just going to kind of separate a little bit so that some of the meat is showing. Just like that. You see what I'm doing with just one hand? I know it can, if you have to use two hands, it's fine. You can use two hands, but you just have to wash your hands up before you handle your, your salt. So I'm just using one hand. Oh, and if you're doing tofu, go ahead and just um, cut them into planks. Cut, the, cut them into um, eight rectangles. So cut it in half and cut it into half again. You want like slabs of tofu if you're using tofu. So I'm just using one hand again to separate the skin from the chicken. But again, I'm, I'm still leaving the chick the skin attached. And I'm gonna tell you why in a little bit. So go ahead and there's no like technique or you know, real rhyme or reason, you just kind of use your fingers to pry 
the skin off the meat a little bit, like kind of like a flap and you lift it off and you just, I wanna expose as much of this chicken meat as possible because I'm gonna season the meat underneath the skin. And then I'm going to um, uh, lift the flaps back down and then season the skin too, because for those of you who have not discovered the magic of crispy chicken skin, it is like heaven. It is as good as bacon, for those of you who love bacon. So I'm just, again, exposing some of this chicken meat. I wanna keep the skin attached because what the skin will do as it roasts is it's gonna keep the, the chicken breast moist and it's going to baste to the fat around the, the, the chicken fat is going to baste and melt into the chicken. And that's what you want. Okay, so does everyone have their chicken breast exposed? I had six, so it took me a little while. So go ahead and use your right hand if you're right-handed, if your hands are clean. Go ahead and use your, put your hand into your salt container or pour a handful of salt into, uh, into your hand and just sprinkle it all over the meat. Put a fine layer. And remember, we sprinkle from on high so that it can really cover as much surface area as possible. And I'm using my left hand. I'm using my left hand to kind of move the skin around. Yes? Do we only put it inside the skin, like not on top of the skin at all? You're gonna, we're seasoning the meat right now. So just seasoning the meat. You see what, you see what the part I'm, I'm covering right now, Isabella? It's just this part here. Oh, sorry, Sophia. <laughs> sorry, Sophia. I called you by your sister's name. Um, so go ahead and season all your meat. All the, 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 the meat part. And you can season the tofu too, yes. Season it with salt and pepper. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna turn each piece over and I'm gonna season the other side. See, there's some, you don't, there's no skin on the other side. I'm not replacing the skin yet because once our hands are clean, we're gonna add some pepper to it too. But my hands are still dirty. So I'm seasoning the underside of my chicken breast now. Don't worry if you see like chunks of fat on your chicken breast, it's going to roast off. A lot of it's gonna melt away because we're putting it into a pretty high temperature. 425 is pretty high. So it's gonna roast off some, a lot of this fat and it's gonna actually make your chicken breast taste better. Okay, so um, if your hands are dirty, like my, my left hand is dirty again, so I'm going to wash my hands. And I, so I can grab my pepper, uh, my pepper grinder. I'm using soap. Chicken is one of those ingredients where if you touch raw chicken, you should always wash your hands because it can contaminate. There's a lot of bacteria in raw chicken meat. It can contaminate your other um, utensils and things. So, okay. So I'm taking my pepper grinder now and I'm just gonna grind it all over the back side of my chicken breast. Use as much as little as you want. Okay, so I don't want to get my hands dirty again. So I'm going to use my tongs now, okay? I'm going to use my tongs and I'm flipping my chicken over. All right, flipping my chicken breast over. I'm leaving my skin still kind of detached and I'm going to season the chicken on the other side with my pepper. Good work everybody. All right so now now all my chicken is seasoned with pepper I'm going to take my tongs and I'm gonna lift the flap, the skin back over to cover the meat again. See, I'm gonna lift it back over to cover the meat. Eight pieces, if you're doing tofu, you can cut it into eight pieces, eight rectangles, flat, like flat slabs. Okay, so now my chicken skin is covering the meat again. 
and I'm going to season the skin again with a little bit of salt. I'm going to do the same um, with my clean hand. I'm not going to contaminate my hands anymore. Just sprinkle a fine layer of salt on the skin. What? Oh. What's burning? Oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to season with salt and pepper. So go ahead and season all your skin with one last sprinkle of salt and pepper. And again, I'm using my tongs this time so I don't contaminate my hands. All right. Any questions? If your tongs have touched the chicken, be careful where you set it down. Don't set it on a clean cutting board. Don't set it down on a clean plate. Uh, make sure you find a, let's put a plate, let's, let's all get a plate or something where you can set your tongs down on. Because um, I don't want you to contaminate your. What if your, your water is um, boiling right now? Okay, just give us a second. Well, my water is probably almost boiling too. Just leave okay. it for now. Leave it for now because we're going to, put eggs in right after we put the chicken into the oven. Okay. Okay. So is your chicken seasoned? Yeah. Okay. Are we supposed yes. to boil our water? Yes, you're supposed to boil your water when you started. Um, yes, boil water now. <laughs> Sorry if you missed that part. Okay. So everybody put your chicken in? Ready to, ready to put your chicken in? I'm gonna, hopefully we can all put our chicken in at around the same time so we can check it later after 20 minutes at the same time. Wait, what heat do we put it to boil the water? Hi. All right, everybody? Ready to put your chicken into the oven? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're ready or your tofu. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. So if your chicken is seasoned, go ahead and put it into your oven. Awesome. Cool. Lena, I eat. Right. Yes. Are you supposed to season the tofu? Yes, salt and pepper. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. So if your chicken's in the oven, I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes. My chicken's on the oven. Hey, Google, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, if your water is boiling already, go ahead and turn it down to low because it sounds like there's some people whose water isn't boiling yet. Brenna, go ahead. You're like me. Turn your water down to low if your water's already boiling. How many eggs are we going to boil? So how many people are eating in your family today, Brenna? Four. Okay, so add one more. Add five. Do five yeah. eggs because I want you to have one egg to test. So everybody, if you have, um, so add one more to the number of people that you're serving tonight for dinner because we want one egg that we can use to test the um, I'm not starting the software eggs. Yeah, you're not starting yet. Okay, everybody have their chicken in the oven? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yes? 20 minutes. Okay? Thank you. Okay, all right, cool. So um, let's go ahead and put our eggs in the oven. Hey, Lena, I'm sorry, e eggs in the water. Yes, Ginger? Um, are, if it's a soft boiled egg, can you save it for the next day? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. as long as you put it in the fridge, it's okay. We can make a few extra. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah. You can make as many extra eggs as you want. If you want to have some extra for tomorrow, feel free to put in more than the number of eggs you need tonight. Okay, cool. So go ahead. And if your water is boiling, go ahead and put your water, put your eggs in. I'm using, I'm going to show you how I'm doing mine. I'm going to use this spider here. This is called a spider, it's like a little basket. And I'm going to fill it with about um, as many eggs as I can. So here's the thing, everybody. When you set your time, when you put your eggs in, the minute you set your, you, the second you set your eggs in, you have to start your timer right away. So I'm going to start a second timer. Um, 
So I'm gonna put six eggs in, into my boiling water. I'm putting them on my basket first. Okay. And I'm gonna slowly lower them in. Be careful, it's very hot. So make sure you very gently boil, lower them in. It's okay if one of them cracks or if a couple of them crack, it's not the end of the world. Um, your heat should probably be on about medium high right now. Hey Google, set a second timer for six minutes and 30 seconds. So I just set a timer for six minutes and 30 seconds, everybody. What I really want is for the eggs to be in there for six minutes and 50 seconds, but I'm giving us a little extra time in case we're in the middle of something and we need to wash our hands or, so I'm, I'm buying myself a little extra time. So I put it in for six minutes and what did I say, 30 seconds? Yeah, six minutes and 30 seconds. Um, make sure your water is at medium high and watch it kind of start to come back to boil. And again, it's okay if some of your eggs crack. That happens sometimes. It's still edible. It's still fine. Okay. Like one of my eggs um, is yeah. really like really cracking. Yeah. Should we put like a cap on the? No. Leave the cap. Leave oh. the lid off. Okay. Yes. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. Leave the lid off because you want to be able to look at your eggs and uh, make sure the water doesn't like boil over. Okay. So my water is coming back up to boil. Make sure your water is boiling right about now. It should spill a, not a simmer. It shouldn't be like rolling boil. You don't want it rolling all over, but you can kind of see on my stove, the water is still moving around the eggs, but it's not like super rolling around. Okay. So my heat is probably at about a medium right now. It's just maintaining this kind of boil. Okay, everybody? Griffin, okay. Oh, when I set my Google timer, it set yours. Awesome. Did I do that for you again, Lay? Lay and Zachary, did I set your timer? Good. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do while our eggs are in the oven, we're going to handle our bacon now. So those of you who are doing bacon, go ahead and grab your sheet pan that has the foil on it. Okay. And grab your bacon. And we're going to lay our bacon slices on the sheet tray so we can cook with the chicken. It doesn't need quite as long as the chicken, which is why we're putting in a little bit later. And we might take it a little bit earlier. We'll be checking our bacon every so often. So here is my bacon. Um, I'm gonna lay it on my sheet tray. Just try to lay them like next to each other, like almost overlapping. You wanna fit as many pieces of bacon on here as possible. So it's totally fine if they're touching because what's going to happen as they get into the oven is they're going to shrink. So mine are like, I'm going to lie them, lay them down like right next to each other. As many as I can squeeze on. And the reason I'm having you use foil is for it to be easier to clean up later. Some of the foil is going to catch a lot of the grease. And then once the grease cools, you can, um, you can throw it into a container. And you can, some people like to save it for a different use. Other people like to throw it away. So I'm just laying my, my, laying these strips of bacon down as close as possible. Always use extra bacon <laughs> if you can. If you have to overlap some, just make sure um, you can fit all the bacon that you bought onto your sheet tray, even if you have to overlap some because these are really gonna shrink. So I fit on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm just gonna throw on one more, <laughs> just at the very edge. Nina, do we need to have a, a bowl of cold water or anything for the eggs or are we okay? We'll do that, we'll do that in a, in a, after we put okay. the bacon in. Okay, yeah. Okay, so everyone lay your bacon down. Okay, if you're not doing bacon, you can just hang out for a little bit, you're good. I'm gonna wash my hands again, because my hands are greasy now with bacon. Okay, wash my hands. 
check on your eggs. Just take a glance at them. You don't need to touch them. Just make sure the water is boiling around them. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bacon in now. If you're, once you're ready to, uh, once your bacon's ready on your sheet tray, go ahead and put them in the oven along with me. And we can uh, set the timer at the same time. I see Griffin and I see a lot of you still working on bacon. So I'll wait a couple minutes. How long is the bacon gonna need to cook? Um, it depends. I think it's gonna take about 15 minutes or so. Okay. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna set the timer in halves so we can kind of rotate and flip the bacon. Sometimes there are certain hot spots in your oven okay. and parts of your bacon might get done sooner. So I'll set, I'm gonna set a timer for about eight minutes first right off the bat. Do you but have the you bacon don't need to... on a different tray, on a different uh, rack underneath or? Yes, yeah, I'm okay. putting mine under on a different rack. Nina? You can go above or below. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nina? Yes, Xiaomi Mei, yeah? Uh, for, uh, our water isn't moving around the eggs. Okay, so turn the heat up a little bit. Turn it up to medium or medium high. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone put your bacon in. All right, I'm gonna put my bacon in. I'm gonna set the timer for eight minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for eight minutes. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take your empty bowl, we're gonna fill it like with about maybe two cups of ice. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just making a water bath for your, for your eggs once your eggs are done. So I have about 15 seconds left on my timer for my eggs. I'm going to fill this with about a quarter full with ice and then add water. Okay, so my egg timer just went off. I'm turning my heat down to low, and I have my, Claire, can you put it on the cutting board? I have about this much ice in my, uh, in my bowl. Stop. Hey, Google, stop. All right, and then I'm gonna fill it with water. And I'm gonna use my spider, and I'm gonna take out an egg. One egg. I'm taking out one egg, because I'm gonna test it for doneness. I want to see if if it's too if it's still a little bit too raw or if it's just the right um, level of cooked of boiled. Okay, so um, go ahead and grab your water, have it nearby, and then put your spider or your slotted spoon and take out one egg. I'm I have my heat on low right now. Okay, I'm just putting it into the water like this, just to cool the outside so I can peel it. And I have my garbage bowl nearby. I'm gonna leave my other eggs in the pot right now because I'm just gonna test this one really quick. And I'm gonna test it. Is it easy? Can I peel it? Is it looking pretty? Yeah, this is about, for me, this is about right. This is about the level of doneness I want. I'm just peeling the egg to test it. I'm gonna go ahead and take out all the eggs out of my, my hot water. Okay. So Sophia, yours is gonna need a little bit more time, right? Cause you're, you put your eggs a little bit later. Okay, so I'm, my eggs are done, but if you want your eggs to be a little bit more boiled, you can leave it in there like maybe another 30 seconds. I'm just gonna let the egg sit in here and cool for a little bit. All right, and turn, don't forget to turn the heat off of your, boil, your, your eggs if, you're, if your eggs are done. Okay, so let your eggs just cool in the, in the ice bath. You don't need to peel it yet. We're just gonna let them cool. And you have your chicken in the oven and your bacon in the oven. They're just gonna hang out in there right now and we're just gonna let them roast. All right, so. Go ahead and grab your, um, your, your big bowl of lettuce that you've already cut. 
so I have a big bowl of romaine like this that's already cut into bite-sized pieces. Like this. So set it next to your cutting board because what you're going to do now is you're going to start layering the ingredients onto your onto your salad. So part of my instructions in my email to all of you was to pre-cut your lettuce and to pre-cut these cherry tomato halves or your tomatoes into chunks. So if you have your cherry tomatoes already cut, go ahead and add it onto your lettuce and I'll show you how I do it. I, you don't have to do it this way. This happens to be the way I always make this salad. I think it looks pretty and I think it's nice for people to be able to um, you know, pick out what they want. So I'm just gonna put all of my cherry tomatoes that I sliced in one kind of one quadrant or one section of my lettuce here. See? Just one sec. I'm not scattering it all over. I'm just putting it in one section, just like that. Okay. So we're just gonna start layering our salad. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add avocado. So I'm gonna take my cutting board away and I'm gonna, I'm sorry, take my salad bowl away. Um, oh, and before I cut my avocado, grab your lemon and grab your shallots. The other thing I asked you to pre-cut was your shallots. If you weren't able to find shallots, it's fine. You can also smash a couple cloves of garlic if you want, or you can grate them into to a measuring cup here. I like to make this dressing in a measuring cup because it makes it easier to pour with a spout. But I have my shallots sitting on the bottom of this measuring cup. I'm gonna take my lemon, I'm gonna cut it in half on my clean cutting board. I'm gonna cut it in half. And I'm going to squeeze my lemon juice into my hand. You could do Owen's technique too. <laughs> and you could poke a hole in your lemon and you can squeeze it out that way. I'm gonna take these lemons that were from Taryn and Xiaomei Mei from their tree. And I'm going to squeeze it into my hand, into my, 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 my shallots. Can we just, and what's gonna happen? Uh -huh. Can we just um, use a lemon squeezer? You can, absolutely, yeah. Not everybody has a lemon squeezer, so I'm just doing it the easy way, but you can definitely use um, a lemon squeezer, a, yeah, a reamer or a juicer. So I'm just using this lemon, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the lemon juice macerate the shallots. We're gonna let it marinate the shallots a little bit to kind of um, lessen the, the harshness of the, of the onion flavor. You can use as much lemon as you want. I'm using a whole lemon because I'm going to use quite, I'm making quite a bit of, sh of dressing. But Brenna, you can just use half. It depends on how much dressing you want to make. So okay. go ahead and start with half. You can add more later. It's easier to make it more sour than to take away sour. Good question. Just use half right now. I'm using a one whole one because I cut up a lot of shallots in here. And then I'm going to use this dressing throughout the week. And I'm just gonna let it sit in here, okay? You can just, just let the lemon juice kind of macerate the, the shallots a little bit. And I'm gonna set it aside. I see on my timer, um, on my bacon timer, I have about one minute left. So I'm just gonna, you know, just keep that in my head. But now we're gonna start cutting up our avocado. Um, Lena? Yeah? Our egg isn't ready, so. Okay, you can put it back into the hot water. Okay. Yeah, you can put it back into the hot water. So turn your water back up to boil and you can, you can definitely salvage the egg. You can put it back into hot water and set another timer for say like one or two minutes. So if, you're, if you found that your egg wasn't quite done enough, go ahead and put it back into the hot water and bring your water back up to boil. So I have um, another few seconds left on my bacon timer. So I know my bacon's not gonna be done yet, but I just wanna look at it. I just wanna make sure it's not getting burnt or any parts of the uh, pan are getting burnt. So I just set a timer so I could look at it. Okay, there goes one timer. Stop. Okay, so I'm just gonna open my oven and check my bacon. If you want, if you're cooking bacon, you can do the same. 
my bacon is still pretty raw looking, but I'm gonna flip it. I'm just gonna flip the direction of the pan. It's already starting to shrink a little, which means that the fat is rendering out. I'm gonna set another timer. Hey Google, set a timer for eight minutes. I'm setting another timer. Okay, so our chicken has about two and a half minutes left on it. During that time, let's go ahead and cut up some avocado. So I have my avocado here. For those of you who've done this before, be, um, you know, you can cut your avocado how you want. It's just, when we, if you want a tutorial, I'll show you how I cut mine. So I very carefully take my sharp knife in my right hand, because I'm right-handed, and I hold my avocado in my left, and I just cut into the middle of it, and then I just rotate my knife all the way around. I rotate my avocado actually and make sure my hand is away from the blade and then I twist it open like that. So then I have two halves. I'm gonna do that with my other avocado. I'm gonna hold it in my left hand because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna put my knife through it. And I'm just gonna rotate the avocado around my knife and then twist. And I'm gonna have two halves here, okay? So, I'm going to now take the pit out of the avocado. I take my knife and again, very carefully, I just put my blade into the pit, like the kind of the bottom part of my blade, and then I twist it out. And then the, the pit is stuck to my blade like that. And then this can just go into your compost. I'm doing that with my second avocado. All right. So there are a number of different ways you can cut up an avocado. Yeah, um, there are some, my, my avocado has some brown spots. So I'm gonna take my spoon. I'm just gonna scoop it out a little bit, parts that I don't want. Put it into the compost. Any questions? All right. So there are a number of different ways you can cut your avocado. I'm gonna do mine um, this way where I don't get my cutting board all dirty. I'm just gonna score my avocado. I'm just gonna take my knife and gently cut um, lines up and down my avocado. They're like a half an inch thick maybe. And then I'm gonna cut a grid across. I'm gonna cut it the other way. I'm gonna do that with all my avocado. So, it, depending on how many people you are serving and how many um, people like avocado, you may or may not want to do two. I'm doing two, but if you, if your family, if there's anyone who doesn't really you like know, avocado. my chicken timer just went off. Nope, so did mine. Okay, cool. Let's set aside our avocado and check our chicken. Stop. Okay, so I'm just going to take a pause from our avocado. We're going to check our chicken. What I'm checking for is is how brown it is. So I know this chicken won't be done, but I'm just gonna flip it. I'm just gonna turn it over like this. See, I'm just rotating it so that the part that was on the inside is now on the outside. I'm gonna put it back in. I'm gonna set another timer for 13 minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for 13 minutes. I think this flip it over. The chicken? You don't have to flip the each chicken, you just turn the pan, just rotate the pan. Just rotate the pan so that the part that was in the back of the oven is now towards the front. And we'll set a timer again to look at it again. Depending on how big your chicken breasts are, they might be done in like 25 minutes. Um, mine are bigger, so mine might take longer, but I just want to take a look at it in another 13 minutes. Okay, so check your chicken. It won't be done yet. Put but the chicken in. Rotate it. Um, I just set a. I just set another timer, Brenna, for thirteen minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, everybody. So go ahead and let's turn back to our avocado. I'm going to continue to cut grid lines into my avocado. So I'm just cutting lines up and down, about a half an inch apart, and I'm going to cut them into little squares the opposite way.
You don't want to cut all the way through the skin of your avocado, just enough just to get through the flesh. And then I'm going to take my spoon. I'm going to spoon it over my lettuce leaves again, next to my tomatoes, again in one pile. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that here. So I have my pile of tomatoes here. And I'm going to scoop. I'm going to take my spoon. I'm just going to scoop out the avocado onto one pile here um, on my salad. Okay. All right. The reason I have it kind of separated out into parts is so that some people don't like avocado, some people may not like chicken. And so that way people can just kind of scoop out the parts that they want. But it also looks nice too. So that's quite a bit of avocado I have here. I use one and a half already. And I think that's gonna be enough for tonight. So I might not cook, I'm not gonna use my last half, my last avocado half. I think I'm gonna put it in the fridge. I'm just going to put some plastic over it and save it for tomorrow. But if you really like avocado, you can use as much as you want. So avocado's done, tomatoes are done. We'll slowly move on to our next, next task. Anybody need me to review any parts? Um, Lena? Yeah? You haven't done anything with the eggs, right? Not, they're still cooling in my water bath. We're gonna do that next. Okay. Okay, so everybody ready with their avocado yet? Once your avocados are done, okay, good. I see Griffin's still working. Okay, Tegan's done. Okay, let's wait a couple minutes. I have one minute left on my timer, on my bacon timer. So before I start my eggs, maybe let's just wait till we check our, um, check our timer or bacon. Okay, so get your, if your eggs are cool, your eggs are all cool now, go ahead and grab your eggs. But before you do anything with them, let's check our bacon first. My timer is about to go off in about 20 minutes, or sorry, 20 seconds. <laughs> All right, I can smell the bacon. Can you, is your house smelling amazing yet? Do you have bacon? Yeah. No. Yeah, <laughs> good. <clears throat> Stop. All right, I'm gonna check my bacon. So here we go. Oh, bacon's still not even close to being done yet. Mine isn't. I'm gonna rotate it again. I'm just going to rotate it so that the back half is not towards the front and the front half is towards the back. And this, this looks like it's going to need about another maybe eight minutes, I'm guessing. How can you so, if it's almost ready? I'm sorry, who said that? Sophia? What'd you say? Oh, yeah. your bacon? Oh, okay. It's ready. <clears throat> You'll know when it's um, <clears throat> browned. My bacon is not quite browned yet. Mine's still looking pretty, still pretty not cooked. So it'll be browned and depending on how crispy or how floppy you like your bacon, um, I'm pretty sure your bacon probably isn't done yet. I think my bacon's done. Oh, yours is done. Oh, nice. Okay, Brenna. Yay. You've done your bacon. So let it, so take it out and let it cool. Okay, yeah. my bacon is still far from done. So I'm just gonna, so go ahead and you guys can set a timer for eight minutes. My chicken timer is at seven minutes. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Mine's at seven minutes too. Okay, so Brenna, let, let the bacon cool and then we'll work with that later. So everybody get your eggs. If your eggs are all, your eggs should be all cooled down. You can dump the water out of your eggs, out of the ice bath and then you can start, grab your garbage bowl or your compost bowl 
and just kind of, you know, bang your, very gently, um, crack your eggs against your cutting board or your counter, and then peel your eggs over your compost bowl, or over your garbage bowl. I'm just gently peeling the eggs. And after I peel each one, I rinse it under water because there's often little like particles of eggshell and you don't want that on any of your food. It's just not, not fun to crunch into a piece of egg. So even though you, can, you may not think it needs it, just give it a little rinse. Um, give each egg after you peel it a rinse. And then go ahead and just um, set it on your cutting board. So go ahead and peel your eggs, everybody. Sometimes eggs are harder to peel and sometimes they're easier. I, my theory is that eggs that are freshly laid tend to be harder to peel versus eggs that are have been sitting around for a little while, which is still, they're still fine, they're still fresh, but I think they're a little bit easier to peel when they've been sitting for a little bit. Okay, so again, go ahead and peel over your compost bowl so that it catches all the eggshells. Don't forget to rinse. Sometimes eggs have this like very thin kind of film like this. It looks kind of like that. I peel that off just because it's, the texture isn't that great. There, it's edible. It's not, um, it won't, it just, I just don't like the texture of it. Next time, well, we're gonna do more dishes with peeled, um, with, with boiled eggs. I'm gonna teach you another egg recipe sometime called um, soy sauce eggs. And or ramen eggs is what you might call them too. It's the kind of eggs that you often get if you ever eat ramen in a restaurant, they will sometimes um, have like a marinated soy sauce egg and I'll do that. Don't forget to rinse your eggs. Just a quick rinse. So if you're saving your avocado, if you didn't use all the avocado that you cut, um, it's, make sure you wrap it tightly in plastic. I mean, if you want, you can even sprinkle some lemon juice over it to keep it from browning. Make sure you eat it tomorrow. Otherwise it gets ooey and pretty brown, it oxidizes. So this dish, if you have time, if you ever have to go to a picnic or a potluck, this is a really easy dish to bring because you can easily um, make it for a large batch of people. You can make a large batch. So I'm peeling my last egg. I'm keeping my eye on my timer. I'm at about three minutes. And what time are we at? We're about 10 to five. So. You might be done a little after six. All right. If you have sous chefs or kitchen assistants, it's handy to have people helping you peel your eggs. Okay. So, um, everyone almost there? Everyone done peeling their eggs or almost there? Mayadi, do you have a question? No? No question, <laughs> okay. I All can right. hear my egg, I mean, I can hear my chicken sizzling through the oven. Cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, if you haven't tried chicken skin yet, everybody, I can't wait for you to try it. Hopefully my our chicken will get cr crispy. Delicious. Good. What is the question, Tegan? Have you done anything with the what? Shells. 
Oh, the shells. Oh, shallots. Oh, no, not yet. We're going to make the vinaigrette in a little bit. Once people are done um, peeling their eggs, we're going to, let's see. Um, well, I'm going to check that my chicken's going to, my, my, my chicken timer is going to go off, or my bacon and chicken timer is going to go off in about a minute and 20 seconds. So before I start something else, I'll wait for that. So we can all check our chicken and bacon at the same time. Um, if you have tofu, your tofu is probably about done. So you can also take that out of the oven. Everybody almost there? Okay. So um, go ahead and grab your shallots and your lemon and your macerating in your lemon juice. Um, and get your olive oil. And in our in the 30 seconds we have, you can grab your small whisk or a fork and you can, um, let's just wait a second. Let's just wait, my, ch my chicken timer is about to go off. If you would like, you can start slowly drizzling in olive oil into your lemon juice and shallots. But I'm gonna wait because I'm about to go check my chicken. Yes? Oh. I did not measure how much shallots. I use like a half a shallot. I probably have about, I mean, my family loves shallots. I have about, yeah, that's a good amount. I would use um, quite a bit of that. That'll make a lot of dressing, Jane. That'll make a lot of dressing for you. So um, for that amount of shallot, I would have put in about one whole lemon. And then we will, um, you, you and I have about the same amount. So we can put in the same amount of olive oil. So I'm gonna check my chicken now because my timer just went off. All right. My bacon is still not as crispy as I would like it. So I'm gonna flip it again. I think it could use another maybe five minutes. My chicken also, I think, could use a little bit more time. My have really big chicken breasts. These are pretty big. So I'm gonna put mine back in for another five minutes. Um, make sure the top of it is kind of getting golden brown. That's when you'll know it's ready. It's slightly golden brown. Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes from the timer now. Okay. All right, so let's make our dressing. So if you have your shallots and your lemon juice macerating, mm -hmm kind of takes the edge off the shallots. Like I said, it makes it taste a little less raw and it infuses the lemon juice um, with the shallot flavor. I'm going to use my, I'm a right handed. I'm gonna use my right hand and be, I'm gonna use it, my little whisk. You can use a fork too. And I'm gonna use my left hand to very slowly drizzle in a stream of olive oil. I'm gonna be using about a cup of olive oil for this much shallots and, um, lemon juice. It doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be a perfect measurement, but you want generally about like three to one ratio of acid to olive oil. So I'm going to gently just slowly drizzle in, not all at once, just slowly drizzle in and as I'm whisking at the same time to help emulsify the lemon juice into the shallot. Um, Ginger, do you have a question? What? Your computer died. Uh, ask, yeah. ask me your question, because I'm just, just drizzling. <laughs> uh, we got lost right after okay. we finished peeling the eggs. No problem. Um, did you already cut your avocado? Uh, yes. OK, so I just checked my chicken and my bacon, Owen. Oh. Just check it. Mine needed more time. If your chick, if your bacon looks done, take it out. My bacon needed more time, but like Brenna's, for example, everyone's oven is different. Brenna's oven, for example, her bacon was ready, so she took hers out. Mine needed more time. So just check your chicken and, or check your bacon. My chicken also looked like it needed more time too. My bacon is, my bacon is in the oven for a little, I'm gonna put it in for like a few more minutes because my mom likes it crispy. Okay, cool. 
I know my, my, my dressing looks like a, it's, it looks more yellow in person, but on camera, I can tell it looks kind of green. Olive oil is green. <laughs> All right. So I have about a cup of olive oil in here, but you should just use enough, um, about a three to one ratio. And then what you can do is you can take a lettuce leaf and just taste it. Dip it into your dressing, okay? And taste it for tartness, taste it for olive oil. Make sure it's not too sour. How is it? I think mine could use a little more olive oil. Mine is delicious, but I think it needs a tiny bit more olive oil. All right, and keep adding. Remember to keep Wait, whisking. Can we add salt. Not, I'm not going to add salt to it. And I'll tell you why. You can add salt to it if you want, but I'm going to be salting our salad. I like to season my salad versus seasoning my dressing too much. You definitely can salt your salad dressing, but I'm going to leave mine plain right now because our salad we're going to season um, in a little bit. Okay, so now we can um, our oven my. My timer is about to go off in about a minute and 20 seconds, but in the meantime, I'm going to slice our eggs and I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to slice them into quarters. So I'm going to cut them in half, long way, like this, and then I'm going to cut it into a half again. So I have four little wedges, just like that. Okay, so you can do that with all your eggs. Just cut them into quarters. This is just about the right doneness. My eggs look perfect. Good. <laughs> Looking Great. at my eggs and I'm like, how did I do that? <laughs> well, you did it. You did it, Brenna. So go ahead and put your eggs again in a pile on your lattice, um, in a pile. It's so beautiful. And I like to kind of have it facing the same direction. I'll show you. You can do it however you like, but I'm just going to put it them all in one little, little pile here. So go ahead and cut all your eggs. So Brenna and everybody, um, what the secret to this like doneness for soft, for like medium boiled eggs is about a mi uh, six minutes and 50 seconds. That's ended up being about what I used for these eggs, six minutes and 50 seconds. Hey Google, stop. Okay, that was my chicken and my bacon timer. I'm gonna finish cutting my eggs and then I'm gonna well, take the bacon out. It's a little liquidy, but I think that's fine, I guess. Yeah, it's totally fine. It is. Lena? Yeah? Oh. Can you, we missed, um, we lost track for a second. Can you tell us how we're, the final determination of when the chicken's done? Are we using a thermometer or are we just gonna eyeball it? Uh, you can use a thermometer. Uh, Ginger, can you remind me what was the temperature we agreed on? I think was 165 it? for the chicken breast, but maybe 175 for the, I don't remember. I can go look for a second. I, I think it should be one, I, I don't think it should be more than 165. I'm, I think 165 is about right. Okay, thanks. You guys. But I'll show you too, like you want to also let it rest a little bit. So Yeah, you're um, right, Lena. It's 160, according to Mark Dittman, it's 160 for the breast, 165 for the thigh. Okay. I'm also just going to look at it right now because um, I'm, my timer went off. I'm going to look at, look at the chicken. To me, this looks about done. It's like slightly golden brown. I'm going to kind of push on it a little bit and the, the breast is pretty firm. And it's also going to continue to cook after I take it out of the oven. So let me um, set that there. And the bacon, let's see. So this bacon, for me, I like it crispier, like, like Brenna, like your mom. I'm going to put it in a little longer. OK? So I'm going to put it in for another four minutes. But if you want, your bacon might be done by now. Sorry, uh, my bacon, I wanted a little crispier, so I'm gonna leave it in there for another four minutes. 
Hey, Google, set a timer for four minutes. Hi, Kathy. Hi, my computer is about to die, so I was just writing a note. Okay. I assume yeah. we're doing the vegetarian version. Yeah, I you're done. Your tofu, just you just cut it into cubes. You don't forget to season all the vegetables, Alice. Yeah. Season the eggs, the the tomatoes, the avocado, mm -hmm. with a, a fine you know season yeah. salt and pepper, and you're done. Gorgonzola. Oh yeah! Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Delicious. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Bye Kat. Okay. Um, anyone else doing tofu? Corbin, you had tofu. Your tofu is done, so you go ahead and let it cool, and then you can chop it into cubes. Did you do chicken too? No? Okay. So, um, yeah, don't forget to season everything. Did you do bacon? Okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say your dad would be very sad to not have bacon as part of this meal. Um, okay, so everybody, while we're waiting, if you're still waiting for your bacon to cook, you can um, let your, you can um, kind of start kind of cleaning up your workspace. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just waiting for my chicken to cool so I can show you how I'm gonna cut the chicken. The chicken will continue to cook as it rests. So I'm not gonna touch it just yet. I'm gonna wait until the bacon is done and then I'm going to um, drain the bacon onto my plate that has paper towel. So if you don't have it yet already, go ahead and grab a dinner plate, um, which uh, this dinner plate here, I'm just putting on two or three layers of paper towel. I'm gonna lay, when the bacon's ready in about a couple minutes, I'm gonna drain my bacon onto this, uh, this plate. Oh, you know? Yeah. You haven't cut the chicken, right? No, I'm still letting my chicken rest a little bit because it's still really hot. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh-huh. So I think I lied a little bit. It's 6.01, we're not quite ready, but we're almost there. We're 90% there. Um, but the chicken, so chicken, so if you had your tongs that you use to handle raw meat, I would go ahead and just toss these tongs into your sink and grab another set of tongs because um, these, we didn't end up using, I didn't end up using these to flip the roast, the chicken breast. I'm gonna grab another set of tongs. Angelina? Yeah? Um, for the dressing, is it supposed to be sour? Or? It should be a little tart, but not too tart. So, 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 Sophia, take a lettuce leaf and dip it in. And if it tastes like, makes your lips pucker and it makes you kind of like it's too t sour then um then add a little bit more olive oil you want it to be a little tart though because it's going to cut through the richness of the chicken and the eggs and the bacon and the avocado okay so um any questions right now I took my chicken out already. My chicken's already resting. Has anyone else taken their chicken out or is anyone else's chicken still in there? Okay, your chicken's out, Zachary. Okay. I have another 25 seconds. Uh-huh. I got a tiny little cut on my fingers. Oh, Brenna, careful. Is it bleeding? It was when I was washing the knife. Oh, be careful. <gasps> no, it's, it's like you're super, is super it, small. Is it bleeding? Oh, okay, good. Like a paper cut small? Okay. Yeah. All right. Like a mini okay, there goes my timer. Stop. All right. My bacon timer just went off, folks. So I'm going to open my oven. Ah, oh, my bacon's done. Yes. Turning off my oven. Let's see. I'll show you what my bacon looks like. Where am I? Here. It's also going to keep cooking a little bit in the oil as it cools. So let's go ahead and set this somewhere where you can safely, okay, it's very hot, okay, it's screaming hot, screaming hot. So make sure you set it down somewhere safely. And then you can take your tongs and take your plate that has the paper towel line on it and very carefully take your bacon off and set it onto your paper towel 
lined plate so it can drain. Okay, it's okay if it's sticking together a little bit because we're gonna be chopping these into, um, we're gonna be chopping these anyway. So mine's kind of coming off as, as a sheet. <laughs> which is fine, we're gonna chop it up anyway, but just make sure you get it all onto your paper towel. And don't forget to turn off your oven if you haven't already. All right, so just let it sit here, let it drain on your paper towel, and then we're gonna let it cool. And then I'm going to take away this greasy pan and set it aside. Now I'm going to kind of handle my chicken here. So let's uh, I take my chicken and set it next to my sheet, my cutting board. And I'll show you what's what's going to happen with the chicken now. Okay, so the chicken has cooled a little bit, but it's still hot, so I'm still going to use my tongs to handle them. I'm going to take one chicken breast. I'll take this one here. I'm going to set it on my cutting board, just like that, and let it still kind of steaming and hot. So very gently take the skin off and eat it. <laughs> it's so good. It's super crunchy, it should be crunchy. Um, some of you may like prefer it even crunchier than this. You can put it back into the oven and let it toast a little longer, or you can like kind of like render it. Parts of it are. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the skin off. You can use two hands or you can use a knife if you want. I'm using tongs and fingers, but I think I'm gonna grab my knife I'm just going to take the skin off, just like that. Okay, I'm going to save the skin. And then I'm going to take my tongs and my knife. I'm going to cut off the, the big kind of meaty part of the chicken breast off of the bone, just like that. See here, it's kind of steaming. So I have my chicken breast on my cutting board, and then I'm gonna cut it into cubes, just like this. Cut it into cubes, cutting into strips first, and then I'm gonna cut it into cubes. Just like that. And then go ahead and just put this on, and pile this onto a section of your, uh, your salad. Let me show you a salad here. So I'm gonna place mine next to, I don't know, the eggs, I guess. Remember to leave room for bacon. Um, Lena? Uh-huh. Our, um, there's a part of my chicken that is uh -huh. really hard to cut. Yeah. Um, so should we still eat that part? Or like it might be the bone. Could it be the bone? The, uh, no, we have no bones in. There's car oh, cartilage, man. Oh yeah, it might be cartilage. Do you have chicken thigh or chicken breast? Chicken thigh. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah, chicken thigh has um, there are smaller pieces of of uh, yeah. So just just cut around it. Just cut around the bone and the cartilage. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So everybody, keep cutting off of your chicken breast. Um, I, I still have some more chicken meat on my, on my, my bone. So I'm just going to keep cutting off, keep cutting it off. And then just add it to your salad. Okay, so I'm just using one right now because I have a big, I had these were kind of big, big pieces of chicken. Nina, so, should, you, should you strain the shallots to have the dressing? No, I don't like, I like to keep the shallots in there. I'm gonna strain them. You can strain them if you'd like. Okay. 
So I'm going to just take continue cutting this chicken, cutting, taking the meat off the bone. You'll be left with these pieces of breast bone with still some meat on it. Um, if you're like me, I love like I love eating chicken off the bone. So I'm gonna save this and I'm probably gonna pick at it later, or you can also save your your chicken breast carcasses and put them into broth. That's a whole other class. You can throw this into throw these into a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer. And then you can make chicken broth out of these bones, but we won't do that today. Uh, Talia, are you done, Talia? Because you did tofu too, right? And eggs and yeah. So yeah, if you're done, don't forget to season all of your meat and um, yeah. Do you have any okay. questions, Talia? Um, what's the cheese for? Is there like so the cheese? cheese? Yeah, if your family likes blue cheese on the salad, you can add that to what your last quadrant. Okay. Or you can serve it on the side too. And don't forget if you have bread to go ahead and toast it. You can take some of the bread that you have and put it into your oven in some of the residual heat. You don't need to turn your oven on anymore. And you, Lena. Yeah? How do you season the salad again? Salt and pepper. Season everything. Season the avocado and the tomatoes and the eggs and the chicken. Season everything. Just don't, don't add more salt to the bacon. Any other questions? Hey, Lena, is you supposed to do anything with the vinaigrette? Or so the vinaigrette, you can, I, the vinaigrette I would yeah. serve at the table. Let people dress their own bowl of, um, of or their own, their own serving of salad. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Was there another question? Thank you. Oh, um, so the other thing you guys is don't forget if you have bacon, now is the time to also go ahead and cook your bacon or cut your bacon up too. Lucy, um, your egg, did you boil your eggs enough? Lisa, did you guys boil your eggs enough? Oh. So yeah, the eggs were supposed to have been boiled for about a, six minutes and 50 seconds, or seven minutes. We're good, Lisa, <laughs> thank you. All right. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> we have a couple of upstarts in the classroom today. <laughs> it's all looking beautiful. Oh, good. Okay, so now don't forget your bacon. You can grab your bacon and chop it into pieces. Bye, bye, Talia. Bye, Emily. Thanks for joining me again. Bye. Thank you, Lena. Um, we're done now, so we're gonna. Thank you. Emily. Okay. Thank you. Don't forget to serve your salad, and with their salad dressing. I mean, and you can heat up your bread too. Bye, bye, bye Gianna. Are we just going bye. After? Bye, Lena. Sorry? Bye, bye, James. I hear your voice. Hi, James. Don't forget the bacon. Um, I'm going to cut up my bacon now. Bye. Bye. I'm going to do the rest um, off the Zoom. OK. Bye, Brenna. Thanks Bye. for joining today. Bye, Jane. Bye, William. Have a nice night. You Bye, too. Thank you, Lena. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank guys. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Brenna. So, I'm going to cut up my, my bacon, too. We can cut it into cubes now that it's all cooled. Not cubes, but um, pieces. Oh, boy, this is good. Clara, I think you deserve a piece. Yeah. The cooks deserve to taste test everything. So if you feel the need to taste test the bacon, by all means, do it. Um, mm. Lena, yes, we finished our salad since we didn't do bacon. Okay, you're done. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't forget to season everything, okay, Shaman? Maybe before you serve, put a little bit of salt and pepper okay. over the eggs and the tomato and the avocado and the chicken. 
Thank you. And serve it with bread and cheese if you have it and your dressing. Lena, we finished. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye, Zoe. Or Avery. So your finished salad should. We're almost done. Great. I'm going to be here sampling bacon. Why do I have so much extra bacon, Clara? Can there be such a thing as too much bacon? No. I don't think so. Don't forget your cheese and your bread. Season everything. Lena, look at what we made. Ooh, ooh, beautiful. <laughs> this is amazing. You're amazing. I'm a big pizza. We gotta figure out. I miss you guys. We miss you too. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so good. But Lena, you've, you've made it, this, this is such a times. great way to stay connected. Every I know, Sunday isn't it? Me. I love it. Yeah, I missed you amazing. last week. I want to hear all about your trip. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. It was an oh, adventure. Beautiful. Oh, I see oh. everybody. Oh, Mayati, beautiful. Camille, nice. Camille and Caitlin, great job. Great work. Yours looks just like mine. Ta da! <laughs> I'll show you. Like. Oh, you're down here? Yay! How's yours, Griffin? You're still cutting? Are you cutting bacon? Okay, good. Keep cutting. Hey, Leigh. Hi, Zachary. How are you guys doing? Guys, almost done. Natalie, where are you in your salad? Are you almost done? Yeah, we're cutting bacon. Oh, great. Bye, Lena. Cool. Thank you. Bye, Mayati. Really Thanks for joining. See you next time, hopefully. Oh, Leilani, those eggs are gorgeous. Zachary, great job with those eggs. Thank you. Bye. Yay, your bacon looks beautiful. Perfectly cooked. Thank you so much. Bye, Lena. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Lena. Bye, Bye Annie. Bye, Thank Natalie. Bye, Ping. Thank you, Lena. Bye, Ella. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.